special request to do a hip related class today. So we are going to be working on our hips, our hip flexors, our lower backs. Uh, we're going to start off with some nice yin postures uh, and finish off with some nice slow postures as well with a little bit of warmth in the hips in the middle of class. Totally optional props today. If you like to prop yourself up on blocks for lunges or twists, you might like to have a couple of blocks or water bottles, a couple of books to do that with. And then we are going to be doing a couple of things with our knees on the floor. So if you'd like a blanket to cushion your knees, or of course, for any other reason, please go ahead and grab one. Any other props that you would like um, are also possible for class. Nothing is totally required, though these ones just might be nice. Take a moment to grab your props and just set them over to the side. You don't need them for the very beginning of class. When you've done that, go ahead and come down to lie on your back. And as you come to lie on your back, take a few moments, just get comfortable. Relax your shoulders. Relax your jaw. you're ready, you're going to draw your right knee in towards your chest. And you can have your left knee tender, you're going to have your left leg extended. And then you can turn the sole of your right foot up towards the ceiling. You can hold the back of your thigh, hold your calf, your ankle, or onto the foot of that right side. And just gently guide the right <coughs> excuse me, knee down towards the right armpit. And you can go ahead and stay here. I'm just going to grab a quick drink of water and then I will come rejoin you here. to bring that right knee down towards the right armpit. Much better. And you just want to feel the inside of your hip here. You want to feel maybe a little bit stretchy, a little bit of compression, a little bit of drawing together, and you can always rock a little in or a little out there, finding that space that feels just right this morning. towards the center line. Keep your knee kind of bent. You can keep holding on to your foot or you can hold on to anywhere else on the leg. You're going to twist a little bit over towards your left. And you can extend your left leg long if you want or you can keep it bent. And I like to hold my right foot or right calf with my left hand. Now I'm standing right arm to the side. But as you keep that knee bent and come into the twist, you can sometimes get a really nice sensation into the outer edges of your hip here, into your IT band attachment. And you can play around. You could play with straightening the leg or bending the leg. This is called a unicorn, I believe. And it's just like a gentle variation on the twist. And you just go far enough over to the left and maybe down towards the floor so that you feel the outside of your hip now. Starting to stretch a little bit. And please feel free to hold on to any part of your leg. If holding onto the foot especially troubles your knee, Hold on to your calf or even onto your thigh. You can create a little loop here and hold on over here. You can bend your knee a little more in. Extend your leg a little more out. And when you're ready, you're going to come back to center with that right leg. Just hug the right knee in towards the chest a little bit. You can hug around the shin or behind the thigh. If you want to feel your belly against your thigh here, again, the left leg can be extended or that left knee tented, your choice.
place the right foot on the floor. Draw the left knee in towards you and turn the sole of the left foot up for your half, happy baby. Hold the foot, the ankle, the calf, the left knee comes towards the left armpit and the right leg can be bent and the right leg can be long. You can try some of each, see what works for you. And again, you wanna find the little bit of stretch, the little bit of compression in the inside of your hip socket. And sometimes everything feels like stretchy compression and sometimes you have to look for it. Sometimes it's so compressive that continuing to move is what feels good. This should feel deep, maybe intense, but nice to your hip. to our unicorn. If you're ready, draw that left knee in. And you can hold on to the foot or the ankle or the thigh, wherever it feels good. With your right hand, maybe now pulling that left leg a little bit across the body, maybe extending the left arm out to the left to get a deeper stretch. And you're just looking for the outside of the hip, the glutes, the buttocks area. And for some people, this works really great. So you can move around. You always come into a more traditional twist with your knee closer to the floor if that works better for you to feel the outer hip. I find that you can rock a little bit here than massaging your right butt. You can roll kind of to the outside of your right hip and then a little back maybe Something where you find that good stretch. both inside and outside before we start a little bit more dynamic movement in a few minutes. I'm a big fan of, as you might, you might know, of lying on the floor, especially to start class. It just feels so nice to get to lie down for a few minutes and stretch out before needing to move into the practice. for the right leg to be long or tented, see what feels good to your lower back. And feel free to move around a little bit here, feel the compression of the belly against the thigh, or the thigh against the belly rather. So you're hugging both knees now into the chest. Rock yourself a little from side to side. And you can decide to stay here. This might feel quite lovely. Or you can turn the soles of both of your feet now up for a full happy baby to rock a little bit. See what feels again. Really nice, pleasant in your hips and your lower back. And when you're ready, you're just going to rock yourself all the way over to one side. And use your hands to press yourself to seated. I'm going to take a butterfly pose, so bring the soles of your feet together a little bit further in front of your groin so your knees are open pretty wide out to the sides. Feel free to sit up onto a prop here if that makes your low back more comfortable in this position. And then simply fold a little bit forward. Feel free to use any of your other props to hold you up here. You can use a block, blanket, you can place props underneath the knees if that feels better for you. And just start to feel a little stretch. And some of us will feel it first in our inner thighs. Some of us will feel it first in our low back. Some of us are outer hips. 
and yoga is a good area to feel a little stretchy here. See if again you can melt a little bit into this stretch. You let gravity do the work. You let your head come forward and the head coming forward and the spine gently rounding creates the stretch for you. You don't need to hold on to your feet and pull with your arms. Your arms should be relaxed here. Even if they don't come all the way to the floor and they're mostly straight or even up on blocks, relax your shoulders. Lift yourself up a little bit. If you're using a block underneath your forehead, you might move it out to the side. And now walk your hands over to your right. So you're stretching the left side of your torso. Relax your left shoulder. Relax your left hip so it's heavy towards the floor here. shoulders to relax, you want your right hip to be a little bit heavy so that you are creating a stretch by your own relaxation. It's not a striving stretch. It's that gravity is doing the work stretch. sure that you have some space on either side because we're going to take our knees a little bit side to side. You're going to walk your hands back so they feel supportive back there behind your shoulders. Take your feet about mat distance apart. You want your legs to be quite wide here. Lift your chest as you inhale and as you exhale, take your knees over to the right and your left knee wants to come to the inside of your right foot so you're not stacking here. You're quite open in this pinwheel shape like so. And it doesn't matter if your knees get to the floor or not. They just go as far over to the right as they can. And then you inhale back to center and you do the same thing over to the left. And you just make sure you have this nice big shape here. Come back to the center. Go a few times side to side at your own pace. Maybe once more to each side. Start to slide away, you can kind of gather them back in. They're still mat distance. They're going to go back eventually over to the right, and you're going to lie onto the outside edge of your right hip. You're going to reach your left arm around. You're going to reach as if you're trying to reach behind you, like I'm trying to reach and touch the wall over here. Nice stretch. And then you're going to circle back, place your left hand down, lift your arms up, take your knees over to the left, reach your right arm out. And if you like me, you run into a wall, you can kind of reach parallel, like tuck a little stretch in your spine. Come back to the center line and go once more over to the right, reaching all the way around. Maybe this time you put your hands on the floor or blocks and you feel that lovely stretch along the left side of the body. You can kind of prop yourself up a little bit here and roll your shoulders back. And then come back around, bring your knees to the center line. Same thing over to the left. You start with that right, or excuse me, left hand planted and right arm reaching. And you can keep reaching, that might feel right. Or you might decide to set the right hand down. Going a little deeper into that. It's kind of like a pelvis stretch almost. You're stretching all of the attachments there around the back bowl of your pelvis. Make it very intense. When you're ready, come back center line and maybe go a few more times side to side just freeing up your legs if you want you can bring your feet closer together for this one and then when you're ready bring your knees back to center slide your
your feet behind you and come to your hands and your knees to your table pose. Feel free, of course, to use a blanket or roll your mat over underneath your knees here as you come to that table position. Set your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Spread your fingers nice and wide. We're going to draw some circles with the hips. Start going to the right, leaning the hips over to the right and then drawing them back to the back of the mat. Go as far back as you can. You can go all the way hips to heels if that feels possible. And then take the hips on the exhale over to the left and forward. Four more times, circling slowly to the right. Same thing over to the left. So you bring your hips to the left and take them to the back of the mat. And then over to the right and the front of the mat. And again, you're going to do five total. Go at your own pace. You can be going, of course, slower, faster. chest and your tailbone up towards the ceiling, raise your knees up, cow pose. Exhale, tuck your tail and your gaze, cat pose. Inhaling, cat. And exhaling, cat. We'll do three more of each. Feel free to have your toes tucked under or the tops of your feet flat. We'll do some of both if you're not sure which one feels the best. towards your right elbow and you lift it just as far forward and as high up as you can. If it's possible, you can kiss the knee to the elbow if you want to. And then extend that right leg back behind you. Knee to elbow as you exhale. Extend the leg back behind you. As you're extending the right knee out to the side, hug the left hip into the midline so it's not leaning out to the outer edge of your mat. Your standing leg and here is your left leg and it's strong and stable. So you're working both sides. All right, you're going to do this one more time. You're going to draw your knee as close to your elbow as possible. Feel free to prop your hands up on blocks here or lift them onto your fingertips to get some space. You're going to step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Maybe walk your fingertips a little forward so you're dropping your left hip maybe a little closer to the floor if you can. And you can keep your fingertips to the floor here as you roll your shoulders back, lifting your chest. Or this is where blocks can come in really handy. You can place your hands on any height of prop. I like to angle my right foot out to the right. We're already taking our right foot a little wide just to get some more space in our hips, but you can always take your right foot wider out to the side if you need to, or adjust the angle. And as you drop that left hip a little forward, you roll your shoulders back and you might get really close to the floor and feel a really lovely stretch in your hip flexors in the front of your left hip, or you might have to be quite high up, just lifting the center of your chest, leaning a little bit forward. Find the spot that feels just right to you. Keep working to relax your shoulders. Two or three deep breaths here to enjoy this stretch. And then as you're ready, now press down into your hands and pull your hips back. Now you want to walk your right foot so it's underneath the right shoulder, kind of a more linear position and is facing towards the short edge of the mat. 
Feel free to use your blocks on either side of your front foot or place your hands on the floor. Tuck your back toe under, lift your back knee. Relax your hips as you lift the center of your chest. Inhale. And then as you exhale, pull the right leg a little bit towards straight and fold a little forward. Feel the back of that right thigh pyramid. Inhale, come forward. Lunge. Exhale, move back down. And feel free to use any height of block here. The tighter your hips, the higher up you might want to be on props with your hands. No more space. Try one more like this. When you're ready, come forward again. Right knee over the right ankle. Bring your left knee back to the floor. The left hand stays down, block or mat. The right hand is going to come onto the right thigh and you're going to Press your body away from your right thigh as you twist to your right. Keep your right knee hugged in towards the center line, so tracking over the center of your foot as you twist. You might feel a nice little stretch on the outside of your right hip. Again, feel free to adjust the height of your prop to make this work for you. Shrug your shoulders back. And as always, if a knee up or knee down direction doesn't work for you, you can always change this. If your knees are really tender, you can lift your knee. And later as we go through lifted knee variations, if you want to drop the knee, go for it. It works both ways. I'm just giving you the direction that I think is the nicest for our practice today, but if it's not the nice direction for your body to go, why would you do it? Be nice to your body. Inhale. Come back to the center line. You're going to take your hips a little bit back, so your left hip is above your left knee. Feel free to use your blocks here. Step your right knee back next to your left knee. Open your knees a little bit wider and come back to child's pose for a few moments. Hands on the floor, forehead either to a floor or a block. And just notice the difference between the right side and the left side. It feels like two different bodies for me. This person over here on the right is all stretchy and loose and this, this body over here on the left is still a little tight and intense. you're ready, you're going to come back to your table pose. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Inhale, find cow pose. Exhale, find cow. You can do two more like that. as you inhale. Shrug your shoulders back. Press into all ten of your fingertips to give you some support and stability. Take your left leg behind you as you breathe in. As you breathe out, breathe out, excuse me, bring that left knee towards the left elbow. Just as close as you can get it. It should feel mildly stretchy. And then extend that leg back. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale to move back. And as you're doing that, you're stabilizing this right hip. It's not moving from right to left. It's working to stay where it is. Lining up both sides really give me dynamic stretch on the left side and a bit of nice heat and strength on the right side. I'm going to do this one more time. Knee comes towards the elbow and you bring it as close in and as high up as you can. Feel free to lift up onto your fingertips. Step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. You may walk your hands a little forward as you drop your hips if you want to. You may grab your props. And again, your left knee is already a little out to the side because we step to the outside of the foot, but you can go further if you need to, or turn the left toes even further out to the outer edge of the mat. See what feels nice to your knee. See where you feel a stretch in this right front side of the body here. You may have to go further forward than I do, or you might have to go further back to get that good stretch. Enjoy it. A lot of gravity happening here as you drop that hip forward. Most of the work is just keeping yourself from completely sinking towards the floor, using your hands to kind of prop yourself up here. Got a few 
little more deep breaths to play with here. You don't hesitate to, you know, move around a little bit. Sometimes I like to look a little over to the left and see how that feels. A little over to the right and see how that feels. towards the short edge of your mat. Blocks might be handy here as you tuck your back toe under and lift your back knee. Front knees over the front ankle. Relax your hips as you lift your chest, kind of the same movement we were just doing. Inhale. And then as you exhale, lift your hips, straighten your left leg until you feel it folding a little forward. Inhale. Soft lunge. Exhale. Pyramid. Moving at your own pace forward. Breathing deeply. Bring your right knee back to the floor. Untuck your toes for more comfort. The right hand stays down. You can go block, you can go floor. See what feels good. Feel free to adjust. Left hand onto the thigh and you press your torso up and away as you twist to your left. You can keep your hand on the thigh the whole time. Or you can bring your hand to your hip or your arm to the sky. And just think about keeping that left knee right over the center of the ankle, right over the center of the foot. So it's not leaning out to the side. Not that that's going to hurt you, but we're looking to get maybe a little extra stretch into the outer left thigh by keeping that knee stable as we twist. Feel free to move your hips further back or further forward, though. and you want a little bit of extra work in your shoulders, you could take your blocks to their lowest setting. Place your hands on the blocks, kind of wrapping your fingertips over the end as you lower your forehead to the floor. A little bit of extra stretch for the shoulders if you'd like this morning. So much focus in the hips, it's nice to give the shoulders a little, a little love as well. sides now feel nice and spacious. When you're ready, you can start to lift your hips. And you're going to come back into your table pose. You're moving your blocks out to the side, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, and you could stay right here. And you could come back to circling your hips if you want or playing cat and cow. Or you can tuck your toes under and you can come to downward facing dog here if you like. And there you might decide to pedal your feet or sway your hips a little side to side. Pick the place where you feel again some pleasant sensation in your hips and your lower back and your legs. or your downward facing dog, you'll make your way to plank, bringing your shoulders over the wrists. If you came from your table, you'll have to walk your hands a little further in front of you, sliding your shoulders over the wrists. You could keep the knees up or down or adjust. Tuck the elbows in and lower yourself all the way down to the floor, untucking your toes. 
As you inhale, you're gonna lift your chest, slide your elbows underneath your shoulders, coming to your sphinx pose. Isometrically snuggle your elbows back towards the back of the mat as you lift the center of your chest, pressing the tops of your feet to the floor for sphinx pose. Keep your belly button lifted here. It's okay if you feel there is action in your lower back, but it should not be painful action. One more breath here. And on an exhale, soften back towards the floor. Bring your hands right underneath your shoulders now. Inhale, lift to cobra. You can stay quite low or you can press into your hands and come up a little higher if you feel ready. Take a nice deep full breath here. And then gently relax towards the floor. Tuck your toes under push back table or downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths there, moving around a little bit. And then slowly walk or step your feet to the front of the mat, coming to dangle in your forward fold. Keep your knees soft. Feel free to place a block or two underneath your hands if you would like. And think about lying your belly onto your thighs so you feel the low back expanding, lengthening. to the outside edges of your feet. Not so much that your knees move, just enough that you become aware of those outer edges of your feet. Become aware maybe of the outer edges of your hips. And then inhale, you're gonna find half lift hands to floor, legs or block to reach the crown of your head forward. As you exhale, release. Keep your knees soft. And as you inhale, roll yourself slowly with soft knees and a heavy head all the way up to standing. Roll your shoulders back, turn your palms to face forward. Take a deep, full breath here. And then on your inhale, bring your arms up over your head. And on your exhale, fold back far right. Inhale, find a bit of a halfway lift. As you exhale, you're going to drop your buns back, sliding your hands onto your thighs. Keep your knees behind your toes for your Utkatasana. As you inhale, round forward, pull your shoulders back, cow pose. As you exhale, round forward with the shoulders back with the spine, cat pose. Inhale, standing cow. Exhale, standing cat. And let your hips move naturally. I kind of make like a little pulse here with my legs up and down. Let whatever happens just happen. See what your body responds with here as a natural movement. Try one more set like this. And then neutralize your spine, tailbone goes down, push your hands onto your thighs, roll your shoulders back. Sit back a little deeper so that you feel the outsides of your buttocks. You feel your thighs working. You need to straighten your legs for a little break at any point you do because we're going to stay here for a little while. Maybe you like your hands on your hips. Maybe you like to add some cactus arms or arms in front of you or even up by your ears if your low back feels strong today. And just feel your legs. Notice where you feel this sensation of the hole in your legs and notice if it's symmetrical. Do you feel your left butt cheek way more than the right? Or one thigh is so much more tired. One side is really easy. Where are you tight? Where are you strong? Have another deep breath here if you can make it. 
Inhale in your Utkatasana. And as you exhale, drape yourself forward, forward fold. Inhale, your legs grow a little straighter as you find halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down. You're welcome to use your blocks or your fingertips on the floor. You are going to step your left foot to the back of the mat. Bring your right knee over your right ankle. And we're going to start here with a high lunge twist. So left hand stays to the block or the floor. And now you bring your right hand to your thigh. And you lift up a little bit and you twist to the right. And again, you can always modify or change things by taking the back knee down if you prefer. Front knee, again, is staying in the center line. It's not moving out to the side. So you get this outer hip band or outer IT band work. Maybe you lift your arm up to the sky. Maybe you can go a little deeper and you can lift your left hip up as you press into your left toes. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're going to take both of your hands to the inside of your right foot. Feel free to take your blocks with you. Turn your left toes to face the long edge of the mat. Walk, walk, walk to the back of the room. Straighten your right leg as you bend your left knee. Now here, adjust the angle of your feet. My right toes like to point up, but your right toes could be on the floor, pointing towards the long edge of the mat, or diagonally towards the front corner, anywhere in there. Your left toes could also angle out a little bit, and you can stay high in your skandhasana, hands on blocks, hands on the thigh. You want to get your hips to settle back so you feel your thighs and your hips. If you want to go all the way down towards the floor, dropping your hips toward your heel, feel free to do so. In that case, you may have to flip your right toes up, even if you weren't already. You can bring your hands in front of your heart if you want, or your hands on the floor wherever they support you. Enjoy that nice thigh and hip stretch and strength work. Taking a few more deep breaths here. When you're ready, you're going to lift back up. And you're going to walk all the way back to the front of the room. The right foot turns to face the short edge of the mat. The left foot turns to face the short edge of the mat. And you're going to turn both sets of toes to face straight forward and straight back. Take a little look behind you and just make sure that you are standing on two separate train tracks with your right foot and with your left foot. If you need to, you're going to step your left foot a little further to the left. So when you drop your left heel to the floor, turning your left foot to about a 45 degree angle, you still have a bit of space between heel and front foot and heel of back foot. And then you walk your hands again to the inside of your front foot. You're in warrior one legs. If you need to, you can take your right foot further right as we take this variation of humble warrior, right knees over right ankle. And it might feel perfectly enough to have your hands quite propped up here as you bring your torso to the inside of your right leg. You might go a little further forward, placing your hands to lower blocks or forearms to lower blocks or even to the floor. As you do this, your right foot might want to drift out to the side See if you can tuck it in towards you. A little variation on humble warrior here. And if you want, you can always take your arms behind your back and interlace. And just like this deep bow, hugging in. If you do manage to get your right shoulder inside that right knee, if you're quite far, you can kind of hug the knee to the shoulder and the shoulder to the knee to help you keep that right hip in. to frame your front foot. So you may have to walk your right foot a little bit in. If you walked it out, turn your back foot straight forward and back. You're going to go to three-legged dog or three-legged table, dropping the left knee, your choice. Right foot comes to the sky as you breathe in. As you breathe out, bend that right knee, stack the right hip on top of the left. Scorpion pose. Feel free to wiggle your foot around, move your knee, even draw circles if you want. And then when you're ready, you're just going to extend that right foot straight back behind you, square in your hips. As you exhale, take your right knee behind your right hand to the front of your mat for pigeon pose. Your left hand is diagonally back, excuse me, your left foot is diagonally back behind your left hand. If you know this variation works or you want to see if this works for you, slide your left foot back, lying your left thigh to the floor. Maybe bring your fingertips to frame that front knee. If that feels comfortable, you can stay quite lifted here. That can be a really nice variation, a little extra hip flexor work. Or you can fold forward. 
if this doesn't feel good to your body, for many uh, people with tight hips or knee problems, um, people who have a lot of um, thigh muscle and buttock muscle, cyclists, athletes, this can be really unpleasant. If that's the case, go ahead and join me. Sit onto the outside edge of your right hip and then draw your left knee back in. So you're back in that kind of pinwheel shape we were doing earlier. And then maybe you stay quite lifted here. Maybe you reach a little bit over to your right like we were doing at the beginning of class. Or maybe you fold a little forward. You want to feel the outside of your right hip here. That's what we're targeting. appreciate the difference between right and left before we move to that second side. When you're ready, take your arms up overhead as you inhale. As you exhale, sit back into your Utkatasana, coming immediately there, sticking your buns out, lifting your chest, lifting your arms to a position that feels comfortable. It can be shoulders, ears, cactuses, hips, whatever works. Sit a little deeper, making sure you can see your toes. And if you can simply hold, as we did last time, that might feel just right today. You feel your hips, you feel your thighs. If you want a little bit more, you can transfer your weight to your right foot, lifting your left heel off of the floor. Maybe you even float your left foot for a couple of breaths that right hip again in towards the center line and you might get a little wobbly you do your best and then you place the left foot on the floor you can bring the weight over there you can float just your right heel or you can float your whole foot and work a little bit of balance in this kind of like being a praying mantis here
draw a little more, you can lift your right hip a little bit. Push into your right toes as you continue to hug your left hip towards you. Inhale here. And as you exhale, you fold that torso forward. You bring both of your hands to the inside of your left foot. Right foot turns to face the long edge of the mat, and you start to walk your hands towards the right as you straighten the left leg. Any angle to your toes that feels good. You can stay up high, or you can come down low for your skandhasana. Remember, it doesn't matter if your heel is lifted or your heel is dropped here. See what feels good to your legs. Maybe the hands like to be at the heart. Maybe they like to be on blocks or on the floor for support. Enjoy that dynamic work in your legs. You are stretching and strengthening at the same time. It's like two for the price of one. You got the stretch, but you're getting the strength work anyway. your spine to protect your lower back. Enjoy another deep, full breath here. And unwind yourself. You're going to walk your hands underneath your shoulders. If you walk your left foot left, you're going to walk it back in. Back foot turns to face straight forward and back. Three-legged dog or three-legged table. The left foot comes to the sky as you breathe in. As you breathe out, stack your left hip on top of your right hip. And if you roll your ankle, wiggle your toes. You're welcome to draw circles with your hip or your knee or your ankle. You kind of work things out in there. Square your hips. As you exhale, take your left knee behind your left hand for your pigeon pose. This variation works. You slide your right thigh back into the floor. And you can stay lifted. Sometimes it actually feels really nice to stay lifted because you get the uh, stretch in the outer left hip, but also a little work in the right hip flexors, front of the right body. Or you can fold forward, really maximizing that outer hip stretch. Feel free to use your props here. And underneath your forehead. Feel really good. If regular facing pigeon doesn't work, sit on the outer left hip, draw the right hand so you're back in that kind of pinwheel shape. And you can stay lifted here. You can do a little bit of a reach over towards the left side. So you're taking your hands kind of in front of your left thigh. Or you can fold forward a little bit. Find your outer left.
table or a three-legged dog. And you just want to reach that left leg far out behind you as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, place the left foot or the left knee to the floor. Inhale to your plank. As you exhale, lower yourself all the way down. You can go for cobra or sphinx or upward facing dog as your back bend. Enjoy it. And then exhale, lower yourself all the way down, sliding your hands a little bit in front of you. They can be way beyond your shoulders because you're propping yourself up a little bit to take your right knee out to the side for a tree frog. You can practice like a little froggy with your foot flexed or more like a tree with the sole of your foot towards your left thigh. The maximum height you want here is your knee in line with your hip. Anywhere below that is fine as well. Lift your torso a little bit over towards the right knee. So you're crescenting your upper body towards your bent right knee and then lie your head down. Any position that feels comfortable. And see if you can relax into this work. Another deep breath here. And then gently move your torso back to the center. Slide your right leg behind you. Slide your left leg up and out to the side. Decide whether you like to be a frog or a tree. And then work your torso a little over to the left, finding maybe a very gentle stretch on the right side of the torso before lying your head down. Just allow yourself to sink into this shape. Relax your inner left hip. Relax your jaw and your shoulders. Another nice deep breath here. And work your torso back to the center line. Slide your left leg back behind you. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Press back towards your child's pose. Feel free to keep your knees together or take them wide, whatever feels nice. Enjoy a couple of deep breaths here. And walking your fingertips in towards you. You'll make your way towards your Shavasana. And I would suggest maybe a Sutta Baddha Konasana, your knees open out to the sides as you come to your Shavasana. Just keeping that work in the hips, maybe placing blocks underneath your knees if you like. Feel free to put a bolster or a pillow underneath your back if you want. You would kind of lie it uh, lengthwise here behind you. If you imagine that's like a bigger bolster or pillow, you can lie back and support your back too if you have a prop handy. Or you can just lie all the way down. Uh, and of course, if this suggestion doesn't work for your body, you can always extend your legs out or do any other position for Shavasana. The shape of your Shavasana is not so important. 
the fact that you can relax into the shape that you choose is just is is the important thing. If you go somewhere for shavasana and it doesn't feel relaxing, it's not shavasana. Even if you're doing what I suggested, it doesn't count. Got to be comfortable here. So take a few moments to let yourself get comfortable. most important work that we do. That's where we allow our body to rest and assimilate all the work that we did. To feel all of the work that we have done. We can let our body enter into that relaxation state. Restore itself. Up this morning, whenever you're watching this class, I need to go back to my day. I think I have an extra three or five or seven or ten minutes just to relax here. And if the answer is yes, and if the answer is maybe the answer is actually yes, but you're impatient, err on the side of yes. Stay here, relax here. You need to set a timer or do so, or just Spend an extra breath or two as long as you can in Shavasana. Really enjoy this place. When you're ready to come back, you take a deep breath in. And a deep sigh out. You wiggle your fingers and your toes. Especially if you've been in Sutra Baddha Konasana, you'll want to gather your knees in gently. Maybe placing the soles of the feet on the floor, moving blocks if you use them to the side. 
way the knees looks a little right so left and wave your low back come back into a bit of movement and then make yourself make yourself make your way over to one side before coming to your most comfortable seated position hands in front of your heart. We'll close with our deep breath together. In through the nose, out through the mouth. On three. One, two, three. <sighs> Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day.